In this video, I'm going to be going over the differences between assessment and evaluation. Um, so I'm going to explain some of the terms, and then at the end of the video, I'm going to explain how you're going to be specifically using it within your lesson plan. So assessment and evaluation are not the same things. They should not be used interchangeably because they have different purposes. So with assessment, what assessment does is it's a systematic collection ongoing to collect data in order to inform instruction. So it's these little small things that you're doing along the way to check for understanding. So that's why it's talking about an ongoing process. Systematic means that um, there's a structure to it, there's a pace to it. Um, and again, you're collecting these pieces of information in order to inform your instruction. So let's say you're teaching a lesson, you're gonna stop, you're gonna ask a question. Okay, they kind of got it, they kind of didn't, let me say it a different way. All right, so now I've reset it. Now I'm gonna have you work on this something at your, at your tabletops. And as you're walking around, you're looking at what they're writing or what they're doing, and you're making an informed opinion about whether or not they're understanding, so it can inform your instruction in the moment. And then at the end, you know, they're gonna, you're gonna discuss it and you're saying, okay, so maybe they got it, maybe they didn't. Here's what I need to do tomorrow. So that's the assessment piece. It's this ongoing, constant, informal, informal way to check for understanding. Where evaluation is a one moment in time. Um, so it, in terms of thinking about it like assessment, you've done the instruction all along the way. You've stopped, you've assessed, you've modified instruction, you've come back, you've done it a little bit different. Now at the end of the unit, now's the time just to see, okay, how they, what's the measurement against those outcomes? Um, how do they do on these standards? How do they do on these TEKS? Um, so there's a number of things that you're evaluating them on and you're giving them kind of a, a one-shot uh, opportunity to demonstrate what they know. And so another way to look at it is assessment is to increase the quality um, and evaluation is to judge the quality after it's done. So it's, it's a little bit about what I'm having you do right now. You've worked on a couple of the submissions um, and, and I'm looking at those to say, okay, here's, here's what needs to be done better. Um, maybe I need to go back and I need to reteach that part again. Maybe I need to add some additional opportunities like going in and, and touching on blooms again, or maybe I need to tweak it a little bit and tell them to look about learning objectives in this way. So you're working towards that eventual evaluation with your final submission where I'm sitting back and I'm like, okay, now here's these measurements that I need to evaluate or judge them on. How do they do? Um, where again, those are little smaller pieces is to check for understanding, you know, for example, with the Bloom's taxonomy quiz or with the instructional objectives worksheet, those are opportunities for me to see how you're understanding the material. So for the purposes of the lesson plans, you are not going to be doing an evaluation. You're not doing just kind of a one-stop shop um, at the end of the unit. So you're gonna be doing an assessment piece, which tend to be a little bit more informal, let's say. And there are different types of assessments. There's formative assessments and there's summative, summative assessments. Formative assessments, um, it's more about the process that's going on. It's not necessarily a test. And so the difference between a formative assessment and a summative assessment is kind of what you're using it for. So with formative, it's to inform during instruction um, or for immediate or near future use. So it is those examples that I was giving you. So you're gonna stop in the middle, you're gonna do a discussion and you're checking for understanding. If the students aren't understanding, you're gonna tweak your instruction right then and maybe spend more time on it. Or you're gonna say, tomorrow I need to come back and I need to touch on that again. So that's your formative assessment. You're using that assessment to immediately change your instruction, either right on the spot or let's say for the next lesson. Your, oh, sorry. So some of the examples that I provide here is um, you could do a self-check. Uh, you could, again, do an open-ended discussion. Maybe the students are working in stations and you're going around and you're checking those things. Um, observations are also part of formative assessments when you're just looking at their work, seeing what they're doing. So they take a variety of forms and I've given you a website link um, in the Canvas modules that takes you to a lot of examples of formative assessments that you're able to use. Summative assessments help you make go no no go decisions um, and they inform after the instruction is done. So after you've done your lesson, you're gonna say, okay, here's the assessment piece. Um, I need to see if I can move on to the next standard 
or if we need to go back and, and we need to spend more time on that standard. So it's not necessarily the little pieces along the way, like the formative instruction. So let's say um, you're doing addition and subtraction. Maybe they've understood addition, quite haven't understood subtraction. So during the moment you decide, I'm gonna spend more time on subtraction. And then at the end, you're gonna do addition and subtraction and say, okay, yes, we're ready to move on to multiplication or no, we're not ready to move on to multiplication. So formative, again, is to inform your instruction in the moment. Summative assessments are to help you say, if you're ready to move on to the next uh, standard or instructional piece, again, within the same unit or not. And so what those may look like, um, it could be an exit ticket. So maybe at the end of the lesson, you say, you're saying, okay, um, write down a response or work out these five problems and hand me the answers on the way out. It could look like a graphic organizer that they're completing at the end. Um, it could be some form of written assignment. So really, when you're looking at assessment pieces, exit tickets could also be used as formative. Graphic organizers could also be used as formative. Um, even observational pieces could be used as, sum as summative. So it's not necessarily important what you're doing, it's how you're using it. Um, so again, for the purposes of your lesson plans, I'm going to be asking you to use an assessment piece. So many, many of you in your lesson plans already have used things like this within your lesson plan. So what I'm asking you to do is at the end of the lesson plan in that assessment box, create an assessment piece that's going to assess your objective appropriately. So the things that are going to be absolute no-nos, you cannot just write these in. You can't write worksheet. You can't write test or quiz. What I want to hear is some more creativity um, and more strategy and technique put into it. So let's say you're going to use an exit ticket. So you can write exit ticket, but then tell me exactly what are the students writing on? What are you hoping to find? Um, what's going to be the instructional piece? If, if, you're, if you're talking to me like I'm a student, what are you going to say to the student? Okay, kids, you know, here's your exit ticket. Here's what I want to see. Uh, you respond to, here's what you're going to be doing. Okay, here's your graphic organizer. Uh, this is what it is. It's a double bubble or it's a circle map or it's a tree map. And here's what you're going to be doing with it. So make sure you tell me what the assessment thing is, like exit ticket or graphic organizer. And then give me some of the instructional pieces that you would if I were a student on how to use it. Um, and again, no credit will be given for worksheet, quiz, test. I want you to do um, some things that are a little bit different, things that you are thinking about creating rather than just passing out um, a worksheet. Uh, so again, refer back to that website. I gave you a website that you can look at for lots of different types of assessment pieces. Um, and then I've also put some additional resources in Canvas for you that just go over the differences between formative and summative assessments.